Um, so I was just basically going to do a reading. Um, this is a collection of 40 poems. I'm not going to read all 40, don't worry. <laughs> um, but I thought I'd start with the introduction, as these things usually do. Um, so it starts, I had a boyfriend once who told me that poetry was a waste of paper and that it didn't maximise the use of the page with its short lines and blank spaces. This is not a book for him. This is a book about love. This is a book about love, but what is love? Well, everyone has an opinion on it, and I think everyone might, might be right about it. Except those people who say love is never having to say sorry, because love is a million things, including having the good grace to apologise. Strike two for the non-poem of your next boyfriend. In this book you'll find many facets of love, longing and lust and friendship, family, loss and a more general love for life and the human condition. Love is never being able to find an adequate dictionary definition. So this is dedicated to Aww. our lovely cameraman Steve. <laughs> um, the inscription says the one who made it all worth it and that's very true. Um, so today is our anniversary. So it's very fitting that um, I'm reading this. But as I said, it's not all um, romantic poems. It's a, it's a mixture. So the first one I'm going to read is um, more of a bitter one. So it kind of takes you through the journey of um, maybe love as you might not expect it. And then it ends up in a happy place. So, um, yes. So this is called Who Holds My Heart? Do people see my tears? Do they find them endearing? See the spirit behind them? I fear not, and lo, the sadness increases. To suffer is one thing, but to do it alone, quite something else. Show me your sorrow, and I'll show you your soul. Look in my eyes, and I'll grasp for your heart. Strive to hold it up. Who even knows my heart? Which earthly being has endeavoured to search it? To care for it, and always carry it with them? regardless of where we each go. Some hearts I hold for a time, and a few I do believe for life, but whom can I claim holds mine at all? At all. No one has me at all. So that one's a bit... <laughs> Let's have it. Um, the next one is Nephew, which, surprisingly, was written for my nephew. Um, pause for laughter. Ha 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 <laughs> if I can find it. Oh, there we go. The bond of family called out to me, and this child that is not mine, but is part of my flesh and blood, I love him. Before I met him, I felt this love, coupled with an overwhelming desire to protect his tiny hands and his closed eyes, his future and his soul. At three hours, I at three hours old, I worried about who he might be and what the world might throw at him, how others might hurt him and how unfair it all is. At 12 hours, I met him, Andrew, my nephew, my responsibility or so it feels. The bond of blood called out to me and I'm saying yes, I will try my best, I will be there as family. It's obviously a different aspect of love and then the third one is a happy romantic poem <laughs> um, to give you kind of the full range. So this is called My Prince. Um, <laughs> and when you look at me, I see the sun reflected in your eyes. I know there's a smile on my face because you share it. You placed it there with your lips. You say my name like a prayer and I love you. You love me with all that you are and I love you. My prince, my happiness. I love you. Aww. And I will read a bit more in a bit. Um, so this is my fourth paperback and um, most of them are original poems that haven't been um, published before but a couple of them um, are from my collections of poetry and short stories. So I thought I would do like a wee bit of um, crossover and read you those. So there's one called Home. 
Um, so then, this is called Hope. Cuddled in my favourite hoodie, surrounded by duvet and favourite songs, tunes that remind me of you in the strangest way, a goofy grin on my contented face and a mood that just embodies satisfied. Inside this room, cluttered and rich with colour, neither disturbance nor worries, nor anything, no one else at all. This is home and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. So I, I've written that a couple of years ago and then um, I, there's, I wrote a kind of follow-up poem more recently and it's called Rede Redefinition. You smell like comfort and home-cooked meals. Warm winter nights. You take me over willingly. I'm safe under your arm. I have moved and home is you now. There are no regrets. So that's how I kind of tie in the, the old with the new. Um, so. Uh, and then the other one is like a little micro poem and it's from my second collection of poetry and short stories and it's just called Short and Sour. See what you done, sir. You worry me sometimes when you're upset and I don't know why. Maybe I could help. Why won't you let me try? On New Year's Eve. And I saw an Asian man sat there on the banks by the boardwalk begging. I wondered what his story was, if he came here to this country for a better life, to live the dream of being prosperous in the well-off western world, or if he was born here and his parents made that journey. I wonder what they'd think now, or if he's bitter over having been sold a lie, having been shortchanged on life. I saw a couple cuddling on the cold pavement and felt the bittersweet nature of it. For, at first, I thought it good that they weren't alone in their plight. And then I thought, how much worse one's plight must be when it's not just you? Seeing yourself in the gutter, I assume, can't hurt as much as being helpless to reach down and lift loved ones from it. There's an old man with a cup collecting coins, too old to be out in the chilled air, and there's a young man who should have a home and a family. Is it problematic to think that someone is too aged or too youthful to be on the streets? I wonder. And conclude that perhaps it is, but only if that is to imply that there are therefore people the right age to live such hardship, but no, I decide the implication was not intended and therefore void. For one is either too young or too old, or too full of promise, too alone or too together. No matter what, there must always be a reason, a thousand reasons, why they should be elsewhere, and in an ideal world, no one would fall through the cracks. First time I've ever read poetry to anybody that wasn't Ellie. Right. <laughs> so, okay. forgive me. We're not learning. <laughs> <laughs> my love found me at a strange time in my life, longing, lonely lust. The pale shadow of love had came and went, but never stayed. We were a symmetry of opposites. She believed while I worshipped at the cold altar of science and logic. The heart of my sleeve was bloodied and torn, but now I began to heal. She dried my tears and soothed my fears. Poetry and music, which had been strangers, became intimate friends. I suffered a thousand little deaths by her hand. I began to believe in love and life again. She began to question what had previously been unquestionable. Days passed by at the speed of light. Our love grew and prospered, and sorry memories faded and died. New memories formed and were carved in stone. My lady love became my queen, but long before she was my queen, she was a self-rescuing princess. My love for her will last until the last stars fall out of the sky. Aww.